Azure Resource Manager templates are what really gives us the ability to roll out Azure infrastructure as code. ARM templates are a way to declare the objects you want, the types, names and properties in a JSON file, which can be checked into source control and managed like any other code file. In this video, we will be covering overview of resource manager templates, what is in a resource manager template and learn about Azure Quick Start templates. In the end, we will also share details about our free Azure Solution Architect Masterclass, which will not only help you understand basics, but it will also give you an idea of the learning path to follow. It will be helpful, especially when you're preparing for Azure Solution Architect certification, which requires you to clear two exams that are Microsoft Azure Architect Technologies AZ303 and Microsoft Azure Architect Design that's AZ304. For the certification exam, you should have an understanding of ARM template. Welcome to another episode of Azure video series from K21 Academy, where we take you from complete beginner, covering configuring infrastructure, authentication and securing data solution for the cloud and Azure storage to all the way identity and security, business continuity strategy, deployment mitigation, integration and infrastructure strategy, including how to prepare for the AZ-303 and AZ-304 certification exam. We have taken a clip from one of our certification training program on Azure Solution Architect, that's AZ-303. And in this clip, our instructor will talk about ARM template. So this is a clip taken from a module on automate deployment and configuration of resources. Let's hear from our expert trainer on the same. So let's start with ARM templates. So before we get to uh, the templates, uh, let's understand what is ARM or Azure Resource Manager. So it's just an interface for managing and organizing cloud resources. Uh, think of Resource Manager as a way to deploy your resources. So if you're familiar with Azure Resource Groups, you know that they enable you to treat a set of related resources as a single unit. Resource Manager is what organizes the resource group that lets you deploy, manage, and delete all of the resources together in a single action. So with Resource Manager, uh, you can deploy assets into the same resource group, manage and monitor them together. So when you're done, you can delete all of the resources in the resource group with a single operation. So everything is made possible using Azure Resource Manager, also known as ARM. So what are Azure Resource Manager templates? So ARM template uh, precisely defines all the resource manager resources in a deployment. So it's like a manifest of all the resources that you want to deploy. So if you have uh, used something like Terraform, for instance, uh, you might have seen you will write the list of um, resources that you want to deploy in, uh, in a JSON format or a YAML file and uh, you go for Terraform apply and these are created. Similarly, uh, Azure, in Azure, you can uh, write down the list of resources that you need, how they, um, you can let them know how they are dependent. And finally, you can use a template to automate your deployment. So you can deploy a, a resource manager template into a resource group as a single operation. Uh, so ARM template is a JSON file and it's in a declarative, uh, it's written in the form of a declarative automation. Declarative automation means that uh, you define what resources you need but not how to create them. So put another way, uh, you define what you need and it's a resource manager responsibility to ensure that the resources are deployed correctly. Uh, you can think of uh, declarative uh, automation something similar to how web browsers display HTML files. The HTML file describes what elements appear on the page, but it doesn't describe how to display them. So how is the browser's responsibility? Similarly, we just tell that I need a virtual machine, I need a public IP, I need app service, I need SQL DB. I'll write everything in a file and it's the responsibility of the Azure Resource Manager to deploy it. So we are not concerned about how we, uh, we just have a list of resources what we need. 
and talking about the template design so how you define templates and resource group is entirely up to you and how you want to manage your solution for example you can deploy your uh, three tier application through a single template to a single resource group right so if you look at the image right now uh, with uh, you have an application uh, with the virtual machine app servers and a SQL DB in the backend so all this can be deployed in a single shot using an ARM template right so but you don't have to define your entire infrastructure in a single template often it makes sense to divide your deployments and requirement into a set of targeted or purpose specific templates you can easily reuse the templates for different solutions uh, to deploy a solution uh, you create a master template that links all your required templates. The following image uh, shows uh, how to deploy a three trial solution through a parent template that includes three nested templates. So basically, uh, as you see in the picture, there is a parent template and you have nested template inside that. So these template, these are VM template, web template, DB template are kind of referenced in the parent template and they are invoked like when I uh, run my when I run my uh, ARM template the VM template is invoked that will let me create the virtual machine followed by it will invoke the web template that will let me create the app service so on and so forth all right so so this is uh, another example so we are not using um, a parent template here we are using separate templates here this is also possible you can you can manage let's say you are the vm administrator you can write just for the vm and there is a web administrator who will write for the web and there is a db update so db person who is going to write the db template uh, you can let it create to three different resource groups and you can link them together if you want so this is all possible using uh, arm template so what's in the resource manager template? So below is a example that that will give you the sense of how each section of the template is structured. We are using JSON to send data between. Um, we use um, JSON to send data between servers and web application. So JSON is a way to describe how applications and infrastructure are configured. So JSON allows uh, to express data stored as an object, such as a virtual machine in a text. A JSON document is essentially a collection of key value pairs. So if you look at the first one, the schema is a key here, key here and you have HTTP colon slash slash schema management. So that's the value. Each key uh, is a string. It, its value can be a string, a number, a Boolean expression, a list of values or an object which is a collection of another set of key value pairs. So a resource manager template can contain uh, the following sections. These sections are expressed using JSON notation but are not related to the JSON language itself. So if you take any ARM template, you will see schema, the content version, parameters, variables, functions, resources and output. So we will get to see what each of these are. Uh, we will start with the parameters. Yeah. So parameters specify which values are configurable uh, when template runs. Below, this is an example uh, that illustrate uh, two parameters. So one is for a VM username, that's admin username, and uh, other one is for its password. And uh, that's what parameters is about. So coming to variables, variables define values used throughout the template for example you can define a storage account name one time as a variable and use it that variable throughout the template if the storage account name changes you only need to update the variable so this is an example um, uh, codex from a uh, ARM template where you can use um, variables I am specifying a set of variables what is my nickname address prefix subnet name prefix public IP address name, virtual network name. So the best part of this is like, let's say you are de you deployed your VM all good. Now you want to automate it. So I, I want to create five or 10 VMs. So I can, I can, I just need to change the name of 
these variables. I don't have to change the, all the references made in the resource manager template. I just have to change the variables and we are good to deploy another VM. So let's say I'll, I'll change my nickname to VM Nick2. Then everything, increase, change everything. Then I can just simply deploy another VM or whatever resource that you're looking for. So it's simple as that. So followed by uh, functions. So what are functions? Functions define procedures uh, that you don't want to repeat through the template. So if you're familiar with any coding, that's the whole purpose of writing a function, right? So you are uh, doing something that needs to be, uh, you don't want to repeat the process. That's where functions come to the picture. So on the screen, you can see an example uh, where, uh, where we are creating a function to create a unique name that could be used only when creating resources that have unique uh, unique naming requirements. For example, like a storage account or a key vault, uh, we need to have unique name. And uh, that's this is a function that's written for that. So the next part is resources. So this is a section where you define the Azure resources that make up your deployment. So this example that you see right now, it is the type that's Microsoft.network search uh, public IP address. So we are creating a public IP address and uh, corresponding details. Like, so if you look at the name, uh, it's taken from a variable and we have declared this uh, variable value in when we discussed variable and we are referencing that variable here. And if you look at the parameter section, I think we uh, mentioned the parameter. Now, this is an example where we mentioned the admin username and password. Likewise, you can define a location parameter and that can be referenced here. Also, the DNS label prefix, that's the DNS label. You can have a parameter defined for that and uh, reference that in your resource section. So, as the resource type change over time, API version refers to the version of the resource type that you want to use. As a resource type evolves and change, you can modify a template to work with latest features whenever you're ready. Let's say this one is showing 2018-81 API version. Uh, let's say there were some new features that were uh, implemented and the corresponding API version is 2019-1001. Uh, and in future, uh, you don't have to change anything much. You just need to update the API version so that your uh, deployment will be something new like uh, a version two of your public IP. Next one is output. So output define any information you'd like to receive when the template runs. So in this example, you can see that uh, by, by the end of the deployment, you will get a uh, output back, which is the host name. And the value is referencing the public address name dot DNS settings dot FQDN. So we are actually pulling out the FQDN value, what is a fully qualified domain name and we are showing that on the screen. So if you want to connect, you can just copy and use a RTP or SSH client to connect that. So uh, Kickstart templates are Azure resource manager template that's a provide that are provided by the Azure community. So it's up completely available on um, GitHub. So let's see how it looks like. So this is how uh, the Kickstart template portal will look like. So you can see that there are a lot of uh, templates available. For example, if I want to deploy a simple Ubuntu Linux VM, I just have to click on this one and I have a button that says deploy to Azure. So that will straight away take me to uh, the deployment in Azure. And uh, if you click on browse on GitHub, that will take you to the repository where it is holding the the code for that. So you can see that uh, what are the parameters dot JSON, metadata dot JSON, all this information will be available. That's like you're getting the source code. Also, there is one more thing which is called visualize. So if I click on this one, it will take you to ARMVIS. So it's ARM visualization. So once it is run, these are the things that are going to get deployed. So you can see the resources that make up the deployment, including the VM, uh, the public IP, VNet, uh, the network security group, uh, the Linux VNet, etc. And uh, if I click on this one, for example, it will tell you what is the code that's written for this. So the JSON part of that. So this is a virtual machine 
and it's taken the parameter of VM name, the VM size from this image. Then in the OS profile, I'll say this is from image, like that. So this part is completely for the virtual machine. So this one says, this is a, so we are deploying an Ubuntu server, right? So we are saying that this is Ubuntu server, the publisher is canonical and all the information. So we have deployed, uh, created a parameter which is Ubuntu OS version. So we are referencing that parameter here and getting the latest image to deploy the VM. So this is how you can use, um, you can use um, ARM to deploy uh, things very easily. So if I click on, if I go to the very top, you can see different resources that are used here throughout. So if I look at the parameters, there is a VM name. The name is given as simple Linux VM. If I look at the username, password, key, prefix label. So here you can see that the Ubuntu OS version is mentioned. The default value for that is 1804 LTS. And if I reference this one, this parameter uh, in the virtual machine side, I just have to mention the OS version. For another example is VM name is the parameter is called here. So if I go to the very top, you can see that the VM name is actually defined here and the default value for that is symbol Linux VM. So this is how you read uh, the ARM template. So that was a clip taken from one of the modules of our step-by-step -step training program on Azure Solution Architect certification, including exams AZ-303 and AZ-304. I would like to invite you for a free masterclass on how to kickstart your journey as a Azure Solution Architect right from learning basics, implementing storage account, virtual networking and getting certified by using our step-by-step 12-week -step roadmap to go from complete beginner to a certified Azure Solution Architect. If you are interested, register for a free class by going on to k21academy.com slash az30302. I highly recommend you to go through this free class to see what to expect in the exam, learn basics about Azure Solution Architect certification and to get a demo on deploying Azure Container Instance. So, k21academy.com slash az30302. Please click on the subscribe button so you don't miss out on our future videos. I will see you in another episode of Azure Video Series from K21 Academy. Till then, take care.